Today's Mass Readings and Gospel Reflection April 14, 2022 Holy Thursday Evening Mass of the Lord's Supper We bless your name, O Lord, for sending your own incarnate Son to become part of a family, so that, as he lived its life, he would experience its worries and its joys. We ask you, Lord, to protect and watch over this family, so that in the strength of your grace its members may enjoy prosperity, possess the priceless gift of your peace, and, as the church alive in the home, bear witness in this world to your glory. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. First reading. A reading from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 12 verse 1 to 8 and 11 to 14. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You shall reckon it the first month of the year. Tell the whole community of Israel, On the tenth of this month every one of your families must procure for itself a lamb, one apiece for each household. If a family is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join the nearest household in procuring one and shall share in the lamb in proportion to the number of persons who partake of it. The lamb must be a year old male and without blemish. You may take it from either the sheep or the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of this month. And then, with the whole assembly of Israel present, it shall be slaughtered during the evening twilight. They shall take some of its blood and apply it to the two doorposts and the lintel of every house in which they partake of the lamb. That same night they shall eat its roasted flesh with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. This is how you are to eat it. With your loins girt, sandals on your feet and your staff in hand. You shall eat like those who are in flight. It is the Passover of the Lord. For on this same night I will go through Egypt, striking down every firstborn of the land, both man and beast, and executing judgment on all the gods of Egypt, I, the Lord. But the blood will mark the houses where you are. Seeing the blood, I will pass over you. Thus, when I strike the land of Egypt, no destructive blow will come upon you. This day shall be a memorial feast for you which all your generations shall celebrate with pilgrimage to the Lord, as a perpetual institution. The Word of the Lord Responsorial Psalm Psalms chapter 116 verse 12 to 13, 15 to 16 BC and 17 to 18. Let our response be our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. How shall I make a return to the Lord for all the good He has done for me? The cup of salvation I will take up, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Response. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Precious in the eyes of the Lord is the death of His faithful ones. I am your servant, the son of your handmaid. You have loosed my bonds. Response. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. To you will I offer sacrifice of thanksgiving, and I will call upon the name of the Lord. My vows to the Lord I will pay in the presence of all his people. Response. Our blessing cup is a communion with the blood of Christ. Second reading. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 23 to 26 Brothers and sisters, I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night he was handed over, took bread, and, after he had given thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the cup, after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. The Word of the Lord Verse before the Gospel John chapter 13 verse 34 
I give you a new commandment, says the Lord. Love one another as I have loved you. Gospel Reading A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John chapter 13 verse 1 to 15. Before the feast of Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to pass from this world to the Father. He loved his own in the world and he loved them to the end. The devil had already induced Judas, son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand him over. So, during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, What I am doing, you do not understand now, but you will understand later. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. Simon Peter said to him, Master, then not only my feet, but my hands and head as well. Jesus said to him, Whoever has bathed has no need except to have his feet washed, for he is clean all over. So you are clean, but not all. For he knew who would betray him. For this reason, he said, Not all of you are clean. So when he had washed their feet and put his garments back on and reclined at table again, he said to them, do you realize what I have done for you? You call me teacher and master. And rightly so, for indeed I am. If I, therefore, the master and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash one another's feet. I have given you a model to follow, so that as I have done for you, you should also do. The Gospel of the Lord Before we proceed with the video, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Also, please hit the notification bell, so you won't miss out when we release new videos. Feel free to share your comments, suggestions, and reflections at the comments section down below. Thank you and God bless. Now, let's proceed with the video. The Reflection on Today's Gospel Atheists claim the universe explains itself. They say, if God exists, then who needs him? After all, the earth does not rotate on its axis because God spins it like a wheel of fortune. The sun does not rise and set because God lifts it up and down like an on or off switch. The rain does not come down because God turns it on like a shower. So, who needs God? If he exists, he is unnecessary. But if these are the arguments used by atheists to prove that God is unnecessary, then the same types of arguments may be used to prove that God is necessary. For it is like saying who needs a heart of compassion if all you need is a heart that pumps? Or who needs a conscience if all you need are laws written in books? Who needs love if all you need is bread and water? We could go deeper and deeper and say who needs poetry or music or dance or friends if all you need is to hunt and gather? Who needs God if all you need is what you see and what you eat? During supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power and that he had come from God and was returning to God, he rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Master, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered and said to him, Unless I wash you, you will have no inheritance with me. The Lord is greater than a mechanic. He is a friend. God is greater than a physicist. He is a poet, a musician, a lover. Who needs someone who is efficient and highly practical when you can have a lover that is neither and happier? Are all creatures necessary? Are there varying shapes and sizes and colors required by law? Of course not. God is an artist. He loves to paint. He loves to create. He even loves to recreate. To recreate. The Lord is not subject to our tests. He is not our guinea pig. 
He is not our science project. He is Lord. It wasn't enough for the Lord to preach to his apostles. It was necessary that he lived what he preached. It's not enough to know what to do to survive. It is necessary to know what to do to succeed, to be happy. And to be happy means to be loved. Cost whatever it costs. Sacrifice whatever must be sacrificed. Fully aware that his hour had arrived, the Lord did what he does best. He surprised his apostles. He washed their feet and managed to give them a new commandment. He washed their feet. Human life is entirely symbolic. Everything we do that is good, holy and right is symbolic of everything God does for us. Everything we do that is ugly, terrifying and disgusting is symbolic of everything the devil does to us. Our suffering is symbolic of Christ's suffering. Our sins are symbolic of the devil's sins. Our humility is symbolic of Christ's humility. Our pride is symbolic of the devil's. There is nothing new under the sun. Through the washing of our feet and the carrying of our cross, the Lord washed away our infirmities, cleansed us of all our iniquities, and loved us beyond all understanding. He stooped down for us and did what we should have done for him. We didn't. Maybe because we couldn't. So he reminded us that greatness is obtained through meekness. The Lord opened the kingdom of heaven to us through parables and symbols. Not only did the Lord wash our feet, he washed our entire body, mind and soul. He cleansed us by the waters of his love and the blood of his life. He changed us. What I have done for you, you should also do. Who needs God? Is like saying, who needs love? Or, who needs a child? Or, who needs the elderly? Or, who needs the poor? In reality, it is like saying, who needs me? The answer is, all of us, including God.